I'm so sorry, Boris. Oh, I know, I know I shouldn't go to sleep. I know I, oh, I just, I had a long day yesterday and couldn't get a wink's eye of sleep, you know. Uh, oh, well, welcome everyone. Welcome to Monster Movie Night. I am your internet horror host, Bobby Gum Monster, along with my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. I must indulge your excuses for me just for the few moments ago. I, I just didn't get any sleep in the coffin the whole day and, and I just kept hearing these voices that said, don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. And so I didn't. I just kept waking up and then going off and then waking up. And, and it was like a foreboding or forewarning. So, you know, when I did get up, I started looking up, uh, well, don't go to sleep on the old internet. <laughs> and what did I find? I found our next show feature film. That's right. It's called, of all things, Don't Go to Sleep, starring Dennis Weaver and Valerie Harper. Uh, Dennis Weeper, you, Weaver, you, not Weeper, Dennis Weaver, you may remember as uh, being McCloud on the, uh, the, uh, the well, TV show called McCloud. He was a, uh, uh, a, a, a ranger or a deputy, actually a deputy sheriff from uh, Talos, New Mexico, and he came to New York and started fighting crime, uh, cowboy style in the streets of New York and well anyway and and Valerie Harper another uh, New Yorker but uh, she was on the Mary Tyler Moore show and then she had her own show called Rhoda that's right Rhoda our Rhoda Morgenstern <laughs> we all remember her right and uh, along the way here tonight on this film we also have another classic lady Ruth Gordon. You'll remember her from Rosemary's Baby, huh? <laughs> and many other uh, occult-type films after that. <laughs> anyway, let us get over here to the old internet haunted keyboard and key it in. Don't go to sleep. Uh, 1970, probably seven or eight. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. So now let us tune in to the old haunted internet uh, TV. <laughs> Did your mama tell you not to turn on the TV at night? How dare you? <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs>
Laura, I don't understand why she has to come and live with us. She's got enough money that she can live any place that she wants it's to. It's not a really. question of money, Philip, and you know it. The doctor says she cannot be alone anymore. She just can't handle her affairs. She's how much farther, Dad? Kevin, you've been asking that every five minutes. We'll be there when we get there. Mommy, I'm hungry. We'll eat your sandwich then, Mary. Kevin ate it already. Oh, I'm sure. Kevin? I did not. You liar. She's been signing things without even knowing what they are. She got lost at the okay, supermarket. Okay, all right, she's okay. Just not but, honey, she, she can she afford wants. to have somebody come in every day no, to take care no, of No, I don't her. want someone coming in. It's my mother. Look, she's old. And I just refuse to throw her away. Oh, come on, honey. I didn't mean it like that. And you know that I didn't. I it's just that, well, we've got this new house, and I've got a new job, and all of a sudden I'm find that I have to deal with your mother. I don't know why Kevin, you feel stop like that. Kevin, stop it! Kevin, stop it! Kevin, stop it! I mean, she always asks us all room. She always loves to have you around. Oh, it's the kids. No, it's the kids. Is. Yes, it is. She only has the... Philip, watch the road. What is going on back there? Now, come on, you guys, straighten up. Mary, it's all right. Kevin, did Grandma give you this? Where'd you get the spider, anyway? Whose is it? <laughs> huh? Dad, can I have a motorcycle? I want horses. Horses are stupid. They are not. Sure is the middle of nowhere. Sure is. Look, Daddy, there it is, just like the pictures. Hey, 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 I see they found it, okay? Not only did they find it, they beat us to it. Hey, look, Grandma's there already. <sighs> I can't believe it. I cannot. What has she got, radar or something? Why couldn't she wait until we get settled in, at least? Look, she's yeah. taken over already. Look. What's the first thing that goes in the house? Her precious TV set. Next thing you know, she'll be arranging the furniture That's like she so wants bad. it. Honey. She's welcome, Philip. So just please be nice. Please. <laughs> I'm nice. I'm always nice. Aren't I? Hmm? Huh, Kevin? If you buy me a motorcycle. <laughs> Mama, we're here. How are you, honey? Oh, oh, kids, we're running all over we're now. Hiya, yeah, honey. Oh. <laughs> How's uh, Rockefeller? Oh, please listen, this new job is very important to Philip. To all of us. Yes. So Hiya, Philip. Hello, Bernice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see you found it all right. Mm -hmm. Glad to see that you're still not smoking. Haven't had a puff in two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can't stand around here all day. Yeah. And these guys for the hour. <laughs> hey, hey, where are you two off to? Can me and Mary, uh... Mary and I. Going playing back? Well, okay, but uh, don't get out of sight of the house. Okay. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Someone is here. Hello, Grandma. Hello. Don't worry your mother. Mm. You're looking sweet. You love your little shirt. Yeah. Hey, come on. What are you doing? What are you looking at? Come on! I'm telling you, you're not supposed to put up her pictures. Sneaking around spying on me, boy? You're not supposed to... Who says so? My mom. That's who. 
Well, you listen up, Sonny. I'm your mom's mom. How you like them apples? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Darling, you're staying right here. Mary, how do you like your new room, huh? It's pretty. If you're not crazy about these curtains, we can get new ones. I like it. Good. Well, you got your own brand new bed and all your own things, and first thing tomorrow, we'll get everything neat and organized, all right? Okay, Mom. And I'd appreciate it if you helped Kevin with his things. Oh, he never lets me touch his stuff. Well, then maybe you can help Grandma on that. I hate the way she smells. Mary. Well, she smells like cigarettes, and it smells like... Yuck. Yuck? You know Grandma isn't smoking anymore. Are you kidding? I've seen her. Okay, and now I want to see you in bed. Give me this. Come on, lights out. Love you. What about Kevin? Don't worry about Kevin. Are you happy, Mary? Yes, Mommy. That's good. Double kisses. Good night, sweetheart. Kevin? Kevin, what are you doing? What, what is... <gasps> Where did you get this thing? Well, Dad gave it to me from the plant. Oh, did he? Well, we'll see about that. Young man, I want you in that bed in two minutes with the lights out. It's mine! Okay, buddy, you just lost your two minutes in bed now. No radio, no noise, no lights. Good night. It's still mine. What was that? Good night. Mm-hmm. Are you comfortable, Mom? Oh, thanks, sweetie. Mom, I have asked you a hundred times, please do not smoke in bed. Besides, the doctor says you have to give up smoking. I did. A buck a pack. I'm not made of money, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry about that Bunsen burner. I told him he could use it, but only if I was there. But of course, with everything happening and the move and all, I don't know, I just, uh, I forgot. You know, everything's gonna be better now, honey. Those people over at United Dynamics, uh -huh. they understand exactly what happened at Midland, so oh, there's no problem. Philip, nothing happened. Why do you insist on blaming yourself?
dropped out of the whole aerospace industry. Everybody lost their jobs. Well, not everybody, as your mother so carefully pointed out. Some people actually kept their jobs, but not me, not Laura's husband. The hmm? important thing is, you stuck it out. Did you know? Mm. Well, yeah, I was a loan from your mother. Did she loan you money? Why would she do that? Mm. You're paying it back, every penny, honey. Jill, mm. please. Please believe in yourself one-tenth as much as I believe in you. And you can't lose. <laughs> Okay? You're funny. But delicious. Mary! 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 Are you okay, Mary? She's just scared to death. All right, this is all I need, really. <coughs> Honey, kids shouldn't be smoking in bed. Bernice, <laughs> we'll handle this. Uh, Are you smoking, Mary? Phil, for God's sake. Well, somebody sake. lit the bed on fire. Well, what do you Mary? think she's smoking? Under the bed! In my room, I heard it! Uh, I did! Was dreaming. It was a bad uh, dream. Uh-uh. Uh, uh, no? Uh, oh, honey. Shh. Daddy's going to look. Shh. Daddy's going to look. Daddy's going to look. Here's the trouble. What is it, honey? Right here. Look at that. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, I was going sweet. to replace this six months ago before we ever moved. See, there were sparks, honey. Well, I'm going over all the wiring tomorrow. You can believe that. Well, obviously, she can't sleep in her room tonight. Yeah. Mary will uh, sleep in Kevin's room, all right? Oh, no. You said we get our own rooms in the new house. Kevin, I don't believe you. <coughs> Mary is going to sleep in your room tonight, and that's it. I knew it, I knew it. Well, I know one thing. She's not allowed to touch any of my stuff. Mary? Hey, Mary. Don't cry, okay? You can play with my toys if you want. Not all of them. I'll tell you which ones, okay? Thanks, Kevin. You know, Boris, on tonight's feature film, uh, Don't Go to Sleep, there's a lot of, uh, well, I like to call them monster toys uh, or uh, monster kids toys that uh, was back in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s thereabouts. Some of which, you know, I have here the, the little robot where uh, Dennis Weaver accidentally ran over and kicked uh, that one there. And of course, they had a very nice close up of the Shogun Warrior uh, that would shoot. Uh, uh, missiles from this uh, hand turret and have a nice swords on each side of him and of course let's see there was a little spaceship that detached from his from his skull plate 
there and would go out for adventures of its very own. And uh, I had a lot of enjoyable moments with this particular gentleman. <laughs> and yes, you recognized him in, on the film as well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, this one here is, is a favorite of mine. It wasn't in the film, but you never know when a childhood favorite will pop up. <laughs> Especially with demonic clowns inside of them. <laughs> so uh, let us get back to tonight's feature, shall we? actually is. There's, there's no structural damage. The paint, I can touch that up myself. Of course, this bed, that's it's going to have to be revarnished, that's for sure. It's going to take a couple of few days. Well, maybe it's just as well that Mary's going to be in with Kevin for a while. Don't you think, Phil? I mean, until yeah. she gets used to the house. Well, I better get started. i got to go to work Monday. Phil, listen. Do you think maybe Mary is slipping back into the old the nightmares? Oh, and... no, honey. It's a new house. I'm familiar, that's all. Hey, when I was a kid, I, I thought there was a monster under my bed, too, didn't you? Huh? I guess. I wouldn't even put my foot over the bed in the dark. I, I was sure that the monster was going to... Yeah, Phil, don't do that! 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 Don't do
understand. Well, it has to run down. Uh, Mary, I'm going to say this one time. I'm not going to say it again. It wasn't that, though. Now, please, hush. Just be quiet. Hush. Listen. It's beginning to get on my nerves. I want you two to behave, to be good, to be quiet. I don't want you running in and out of our room every two minutes with some wild tale Phil, about something. No, this is it. I've had it, Laura. Well, she maybe heard something, what? Phil. You handle it. Phil. I did hear something, Mommy. I know you did, sweetheart. Well, you think you did. It's the same. I tell you what, why don't you sleep in our room with us tonight? Would you like that? Well, are you sure? I'm okay. Okay, there's my girl. We all loved her, Mama. That's not it. It's... It's Mary. She's... She's going through such a difficult time now. I don't want things all over the house that remind her of Jennifer. Hogwash. <sighs> Mama, if you love somebody, you don't pretend they never existed. No one is pretending she never existed, but she's dead. Mama, Mama, Jennifer is dead. I suppose when I'm dead and gone, you'll shut my picture up somewhere, pretend you never had a mother. <sighs> that is so ridiculous. I... Don't say that. Don't even think that. That's not it at all. Oh, she was so beautiful. Yes. She looked like you when you were a little girl. Boy, I wish I hadn't let Philip drive. No, 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 no. It was an accident. It was nobody's fault. It was nobody's well, fault. I... You remember that now. It was nobody's fault, darling. Sneaking around, spying again, sonny boy. Mary's acting weird. Why don't you tell your mother? Well, you were going to tell on me. Why don't you tell on Mary? I'm going to. Are you 
you doing under the bed? Je Je Jennifer. Shh, just, just calm down. Now, what is it? What is it? Jennifer. What, what about Jennifer? She was here. Oh, Mary, you were just dreaming. She, she was there. She talked to me. She won. She won. Mary, Mary, Jennifer is dead. She is in heaven, and you know that. I don't care. I saw her. I did. No, no, I, no. I did. No, I saw her. No, 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 sweetheart. You didn't. Very good people, I hear, at uh, UC Davis. I could here? see Mary. Huh? You've been discussing this all over town? Or no, something? Philip. Philip, I talked to one woman at one market, and her son happens to work at the clinic there. Honey, we don't need clinics, and we don't need psychiatrists. You are overreacting to this whole thing. Philip, Mary is convinced that Jennifer is alive. She's convinced? Huh. She's not convinced. She misses her sister, that's all. They were some, they were close in age, and so she had some kind of a, a flashback or something. There's nothing to worry about. She hasn't slept two hours since we moved into this house, Phil. Well, um, I think her health is in some danger. Why don't, why don't you just call a doctor and get her a sleeping pill? Oh, you can't just call and get a prescription. Do you think they prescribe over the telephone sleeping pills? They have to see the person. <laughs> Rise, Queen Guinevere. Camelot awaits. Come on, Mary, don't you remember? Now you're supposed to say, thanks a lot, Lancelot. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Jennifer, is it... Sir Lancelot. I thought that... I'll never leave you again. Promise? Promise. Promise? Promise. But you have to help me. How? They don't want me to be here. They don't miss me like you do. They don't care. But they loved you. Not real love. Not like you do. And I always loved you the most. They always hated that. And they said we were in our own little world. Philip. What's really bothering you about her seeing someone? I mean, I'm talking about going once or twice. A lot of people go to psychiatrists well, Laura, and psychiatrists. a lot of people are not who we're talking about. We're talking about our family. Now, these people that hired me, that's, that's a, a very special situation. Believe me, it is. They know what happened when Jennifer died. I told them all about it. And I assured them that everything was all right. Now, if they find out that Mary is going to a psychiatrist or going to a clinic, they're going to think that there's, there's some pressure here at the house. 
they're th going to think that I'm under some kind of tension. Somebody is always looking to trip you up. You know, Mary is... She's not the only one that had to deal with this. I don't know why she doesn't forget it. I know, why didn't she let it go? Secret. Don't say anything about me anymore. But why? First of all, they won't believe you. They think something's wrong with you. They'll try and keep us apart. They will. Spy on us. They'll try and catch you talking to me. They don't spy on me. They don't have to. You mean Kevin? And he tells. He teases and snoops and spies and tells. He always tells. So well, you've got to take care of Kevin. together wrong when he set it up. Yeah, well, I'll get blamed. Where were you anyway? Oh, I just went to the bathroom. Look, we'll put it together ourselves, and then no one will know. And then tomorrow night, I'll move back into my room, and you'll have your own room to yourself again. Well, you don't have to look that happy about it. No reading at the table, please. But Dad gets to. Kevin, just eat. Huh? What's wrong with your head? Nothing. No, let me uh, see. This is really something. You've got a big goose egg there. Would you please be more careful? There's a guy down... What is it? There's a guy in Amarillo, Texas, that built his entire house out of, out of bottles. It took him 11 years. <laughs> no, Kevin. <laughs> He's got nothing on you, Phil. Give you a little more time, and you could add on a whole new wing. Mm. Ah, it's looking good, Boris. It's looking very good. The gossatini that you mixed up for me is nice, and uh, I think this one may be an A positive. Hmm? <laughs> well, thank you, Boris. Thank you. Usually I get the O negative, but tonight I'm getting the old uh, A positive. Whoops. And let us get a little bit here. There we go. <laughs> it seems that our fiend Dennis Weaver tonight has a bit of a drinking problem. <laughs> well, I suppose if you've been through what this poor fellow has been through, you'd need a bit of the old uh, Gostini yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so let us get back to tonight's feature. Don't go to sleep. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Ah, delicious, Boris. Delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Let us go back. I'm standing in the area where little Todd Witterman, age six, was last seen yesterday by several older boys who were here playing softball. Todd had been picnicking about 200 yards from here with neighborhood friends and had wandered away after lunch. Because there were several other children at the picnic, Todd was not immediately missed. He wasn't gone more than five minutes.
according to his stricken mother. Well, where is it? The supermarket. Shopping. Line must be a mile long. Jan Darren is better. And Chuck Iverson, Chuck and Jan, and the whole on the spot news team. That's who you want to be watching. If you want to know what's going on in the world. Are all the same? Uh, if you want to watch them, why don't you go upstairs? <laughs> My set's on the fritz. The last time the repairman told me the phase impedance crossover was shot to hell. I don't think he knows sheep from shoe polish. How many of those have you had? How's about a drink, Bernice? Hmm? Oh, have a sidecar. I'm making martinis. Brandy, triple sec, a dash of lemon juice. That's all there is in a sidecar. I know how to make a sidecar. I really know how to make a sidecar. You want a martini or not? How many of those are you had? I am relaxing after a hard day at work, and I'm having a few martinis in my own house. And if I want to have two martinis or ten martinis, that is my business. You dig? Suit yourself. What are you trying to tell me, Bernice? You trying to tell me something? Nothing, just... You know how you get when you drink martinis. I don't know how I get. Why don't you tell me, huh? I'd like to know. Tell me, how do I get? You know. Oh, I know, all right. I know. And who was it that kept pushing martinis in my hand, huh? Who was it that wouldn't let us go earlier when everybody was all right, huh? Who was that? Who was it that kept saying, oh, come on, Phil. Just one more. Have one more. Just one for the road. Who was that? Where are you going, Bernice? Come on, Bernice, don't be a party pooper. Just one more. Why don't you have one for the road? Huh? She knows. But how? Pictures in her room. She knows I'm here. She'll wreck everything. But how can she wreck everything? Mary, you do love me, don't you? Yes. You do want us to be together, don't you? You don't want anyone to come between us again, do you? Oh, no, please. Well, then. Well, what can we do about it? What about Kevin? We can use Kevin to help us get rid of Grandma.
Boris, did you see that? A floating lizard. <laughs> it sounds like it should be a, a Gostini type drink. What do you think? <laughs> a floating lizard. broken. So what? So you were messing around with Ed. No, Grandma's dead. So what? So don't you feel sad? Why should I? Because you're supposed to. When someone dies, you're supposed to feel sad about it, and not think about that stupid snake. Ed is not a stupid snake. He's a lizard. And don't pretend you feel sad about Grandma, because I know you're not. How would you know? Because she loved Jennifer more than you. Anyway, I hate lizards, and I wouldn't even try to touch one. And second of all, Ed is the dumbest name for a lizard I've ever heard of. Ed isn't just a lizard. He's an iguana. And this is proof that you were messing around with his terrarium. Maybe it was Mom cleaning up or something. What would I want with this slimy monster anyway? Oh, you're guilty. Boy, are you ever guilty? Get out of here. Get out! I'm not guilty! I'm not! And you're lying! Just get out of here! Miss me! Get out! You're getting weird, Mary. And Mom and Dad know it. And I heard them talking that they're gonna send you the shrink. Shut up! Just shut up! What do you know anyway? Oh, yes, I, I do! Know anything! Oh, yes, I do! I'm gonna tell them everything! Heavens! What on earth is all this noise about? But Answer what? me! It wasn't me, Mom. It was Mary. Now, not another word. I don't want one bit of your back talk. Now, just be quiet, go in your room, and not a word. I have had it. Go! Boy, Ed, you're lucky. No sister, no mom. It's a jungle out there. Don't worry about it. 
nothing's going to happen. But I've never been to a psychiatrist. He'll ask me all kinds of questions, and I won't know what to say. Listen to me. There's nothing to worry about. I'll help you. But how? Remember how I used to do your homework for you? Yes. But that's not the real worry now. Now we've got to worry about Kevin. And don't worry. I'll help you with the shrink. Uh, this little bank I got in Nome, Alaska. The old man that gave it to me had had it since he was a little kid. Probably about your age. You're gonna love it. Watch right here. Watch it. <laughs> uh, maybe we can figure out why you didn't want to keep it. Uh, how about this one, Mary? Watch this. Watch it. <laughs> that was his fastball. You want to see his slider? Horses, horses. You must like horses. All those girls like horses. Jockeys. Jumping over fences. I got this one in Brisbane. You know where Brisbane is? Australia. Good, right. And this one is from a very special collection made around 1900, 1905. And I begged and I pleaded with the owner. This is the only one he'd give me. All the rest of them are in museums. Hmm? Watch this. That's funny. Hmm. You try it. See if you can make it work. Is this supposed to make me feel some way or something? What? What you're doing. Is this a kind of psychology? Yes. It's supposed to make you feel at ease. Have confidence. Well, I, uh, I do one with video games that's supposed to not make you feel so threatened. Well, I don't feel threatened. Well, that's good. How do you feel? About what? Anything. Home, school, the weather. Are you still playing that game? Yes, I am. All right, look, what I want to know specifically is how you feel about things. Your mother and father seem to think you have a problem. How about your brother? Kevin? Tell me, how, how do you get along together? Okay, most of the time. Sometimes not. That's when he's being a jerk. What does that mean, being a jerk? You know, he's a boy. He's nine. So sometimes he's a jerk. <laughs> yeah, well, that's logical. I guess that would qualify almost anyone for jerkhood. So you play with Kevin, and that's it. There isn't anyone else to play with. Well, we just moved in, and school hasn't started yet. Look, Dr. Cole, did my mom tell you that I thought I saw Jennifer? Was that your sister? She's dead. She died in a car accident. Would you like to talk about it? She got killed. It's over. It was an accident. That's all. Is it? I know my mom probably told you some pretty weird stuff about me thinking Jennifer was alive. Something like that, yes. But see, that was only a dream. I thought I saw her and talked to her, but I was only dreaming. I see. Then she didn't come back or anything. Oh, no. Come back. She's dead, Dr. Cole.
Mary? Kevin? You guys? Hey, I, uh, I'm making some tuna fish sandwiches, and then you can have some cookies later. Okay, Mom, in a minute. All right, well, they'll be in the fridge when you want them. Thanks, Mom. Kevin. Sideways, kind of. You hold it like this, you make it slanted, and then you throw it that way. No, not at me, but away. And then it'll curve and come to me. I'll try. Okay, now, you have to get it tilted and throw it. There, you jerk! Sorry. Now we can't play. Dad will get it when he gets home from work. But that'll be hours from now. Well, you can't go up there. You're not allowed. Oh, yeah? Who's gonna stop me? And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hand upon them. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea.
told him not to go up on the roof. I told him. What's wrong? Nobody's blaming you, are they? No, nobody's blaming me. How could they? I told him. I guess like most little brothers, he did the exact opposite of what you told him to do, right? Yes, he all... How do you feel about it? Sad. But it's worse for Mom and Dad. Were you uh, sadder when Jennifer died? I guess. But I'm not anymore. Were you sad for a long time? Pretty long. How long? No, oh, I don't know. Probably oh, three months, six months. I don't know, I said. A year. That's a dumb question, how long? I'm over it now. So what's the difference? Good, that's... It's good to get over things like that, right? Yes. Come on, kid. Eat. Up your strength. Ed, come on, don't give me a hard time. I don't know what he eats. Don't die if he doesn't eat. Phil. My son's pet. I didn't even bother to find out what the damn thing is. Look, don't worry. I'll take him to the pet shop tomorrow morning and you're, they'll you're find what? him. A, no, find no, him a no, honey, you're not going to do that. This is my son's pet. I'm going to keep him. Isn't that right, Ed? Isn't that right, old boy? Hmm? up on the roof anyway. I told him a hundred times. I used to climb on the roof when I was a kid, but I never fell off. I should have never given him a frisbee. Bill, please stop. I don't drink. You are drinking too much, Philip. Really? Yes, really. Why shouldn't I? Huh? I've got to work. No, I've got to try and keep everything. <laughs> I don't understand it. I really don't. I, I can't take it anymore. I can't. You can't take it. Neither can I. All of this is not just happening to you, Philip. Oh, come on. I don't know what he was doing on the roof. He was in the kitchen. Not a Two minutes before, taking a cookie. Oh. <laughs> my mother and two of my children have died this year and honey, one for, year. Honey, and what do I get from you, this honey, you weeping, you... drunk bitch? It is indulgent, Philip. And don't lean on me. I can't comfort you now. I can't do everything. I, I'm not a rock. I cannot. Handle every detail. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. What, what details are you talking about? Everything. Well, I'm asking. All of it, Philip. The funeral details. Packing the boys' things. Getting ready for the funeral. Now hold it. Now wait a minute. Taking the hold it. Now, now just and a minute. You hold it right there. I wanted to make that call. If you will remember. Did you? No, no, because you wouldn't let me. If I don't do it, it doesn't get done. That's the truth. I see people staring at me sympathetically and they're keeping their distance because maybe I'm contagious. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I can't. But I'm gonna have to do it because you can't take it. No. No, you do it. 
You, you do it. You do it this time, Philip. You bag up his little shirts and pants and his okay. rocket ship. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh. I will do it. I will do it right now. A snake, it would have bit me. I found Ed's food. Oh, good. Hey, Ed, old buddy, soup's on. There you go. There you go. Oh, that's better. That's more like it. <laughs> You're going to live because we found your food, huh? Hmm? Oh, my eyes must look awful. awful. Yes. No, you're oh, beautiful. Those maps. Honey, you know, a little emotion that just it gives the lady such a beautiful flush. <laughs> Just a little place. Just a little bitty place. Greetings, my dear fiends. Greetings. It's Bobby Gill Monster and the Boris T. Buzzer of Monster Movie Night. And do we have a surprise for you? We're going to be a, in part of a documentary called The Lockdown. And it's made by uh, Sarah Stevenson. And it's basically it takes a look at uh, filmmakers and actors, uh, and they're 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 striving to uh, uh, do things while locked down, while in their homes, much like we do anyway here at uh, at the Gargoyle Manor for our set. Uh, we we've been doing it for years this way, but a, a lot of the uh, actors and filmmakers now, the big, big productions, have basically had to come and do it the way that B Boris and I have been doing it for years, and that is uh, lock it up, just ourselves, coming to you through video. <laughs> and anyway, we're, we're so happy to be a part of that, and we want to thank Sarah for asking us to uh, be a part of it, be a part of the interviews. And we wish her loads and loads of luck with it. And it will oh, it'll be out April 30th, uh, 2021, of course. And so keep an eye on it. And uh, we'll, we'll keep you apprised uh, and updated as well. Eh, Boris? <laughs> Indeed. And as always, keep screaming. Comic books, Jen, Astro Man, Checker. Look at this gross thing. Jen, we shouldn't do this anymore. Okay, we won't. Oh, yuck. No, I'm really serious. Me too. We only did this in the first place because you wanted to. I wanted to. So we could be together. How come they let kids read this stuff? I do want us to be together. Well, it doesn't look too good right now. They're selling the house. Good. It's depressing here. If you think it's depressing here, where do you see where they send you when they move? 
What do you mean? You don't think they're taking you with them, do you? Why do you think they're moving to a smaller house? Because you are not going to be with them. You are going to be put in a nut house. That's one place I'm not going to. What makes you think I'm going to a nut house? Well, Dr. Cole thinks you're nuts. But I told him everything you said. He doesn't believe you. He's smart. And he told them that you need treatment. You know what treatment is? They lock you in a room, all alone, with no pictures or books. They strap you to a bed. They won't even let you go to the bathroom. Then, every day, they stick needles in you. No! And if you think I'm gonna hang around there, you really are nuts. Mary? Honey! What are you doing up? Nothing. Who are you talking to, Mary? Jennifer. I, I talk to Jennifer, too. I talk to her every night. I apologize. I, I try to tell her how sorry I am. I made us stay late at Grandma's that night. If only I had... Driven home. It wasn't your fault, Mommy. It was an accident. I know, I know, I know. And then Mother and Grandma and Kevin. Poor, sweet little Kevin. Oh, God, enough. Enough. No. <laughs> no. Don't cry, Mommy. <sighs> Go to bed now. These are great. The reason that I wanted to speak to both of you together... I bet they cost you an arm and a leg, huh? Well, yes, they represent quite an investment. It's... What I want the two of you to understand is... the extraordinary stress that you have been under is affecting all of you, not just your daughter. What do you suggest, Doctor? That all three of you need counseling. Well... No, I don't Doctor. mean anything long and drawn out. I just mean... You have been through so much, you should know that you're not alone. It happened. Uh, airplane crashes, uh, hotel fires, floods, whole families wiped out. Earthquakes. I beg your pardon? Earthquakes, fires, floods, earthquakes. Yes, that's why I think you should consider spending a little time each week at a counselor. Well, well I, I'm going to work. Look, it can cause depression and I guilt under, for the survivors. I understand that, yes. It can be a real danger. She seems fine. As a matter of fact, uh, she's handling this better than any of us, right? Hey! 
Hey, honey. And Al Warner with a 90 I can't hear the radio with the air dryer on. Would you just bring it over here, please? Thank you. Just set it right there. That's fine. What for dinner? Pizza. Mom's getting it. Pepperoni? Yeah. Don't you like pepperoni? Yeah. 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 Oh, Daddy. You say eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
hungry. But I could eat just like you said. Big pieces for Daddy, little pieces for you and me. That. Just tell you around the I can facility. walk. I can so, walk just fine. Really? Right, give me a cane it's or hospital something. Rules. No. It's hospital rules. We have to Dr. Do Cole. regulations. All right. Dr. Graham. I'll do it. I'm all right. Laura, relax. You had two shots. You can't even think. Please relax. Listen, don't go fall down those stairs in the middle of the night now. Turn that uh, I fell down some stairs. I didn't tell him that my 12-year-old, who had just murdered her father, was trying to murder me. The police can't verify that. Now, the radio fell in the bathtub accidentally. Do you believe that, Doctor? Really? It doesn't matter what I believe about Mary, except that she is definitely mentally disturbed. She's being diagnosed by Dr. Robin Samuel, one of the best in the country. As a matter of fact, Dr. Samuel is with her now. Why? Why not you? I'm a psychologist. I can't prescribe that. Therapy she needs, drug therapies, hospitalization. What's wrong, Doctor? What, what is wrong with her? Has anyone in your family or Phillips ever been treated for psychotic depression? No. No one. My mother's dad, my grandfather, once locked himself in the basement for, for days. He wouldn't eat, and another time he didn't talk for six months. Uh, in those days, the doctors called it um, melancholia. Hereditary? There can be a predisposition towards psychotic depression as there can be towards alcoholism. A person doesn't have to get it, but it can be triggered. And I think the trigger in Mary's case was an unusually long mourning period after her sister's death. And the mourning turned into depression, depression into guilt, guilt into anger. The anger turned in on itself. And I think that's why she set fire to the bed. The car keys. It's, it's all right. You left them in the car. Mary's here? In, uh... Yes, she's with Dr. Samuel. Dr. Cole, I have to ask you something. Yes? This anger that Mary directed inward, as you say, against herself, mm -hmm. isn't it possible that she directed anger outward against others, against her family? Yes. Killing everyone in the family? Well, can you make it, Mrs. Hogan? Yes, thank you. All right, careful now. What you have to realize, Laura, is that Mary has a disease. But they could do a lot these days. You get some rest. She's in good hands. You're in good hands. Your job is to get well so that when Mary's released, she'll have a home to come to. Released? You and your daughter are going to be together again. <sighs>
Ah, Boris, looky here. What a wonderful article here in the Scary Monsters magazine. We've got it, our old fiend, uh, Lord Blood Ra, and the Monkey and the Mummy Show uh, articles as well. Aha! Wonderful, wonderful. Congratulations, my dear fiends, on having your... Um, your article, your your uh, sales being uh, talked about here in the old Scary Monsters magazine, the magazine for real monsters. <laughs> and uh, congratulations as well, my dear fiends, for being nominated for favorite horror host of the Rondo Hatton Award. I myself. Uh, has been nominated as well. So uh, we hope to see you at the awards. <laughs> so everyone, you need to get out and vote. Vote for me. Vote for them. Vote for your favorite horror host. And let's see if we can uh, get us all together uh, for an award. Hmm? <laughs> let's get back to reading this. This is so wonderful. All the uh, monsters and Frankensteins and Draculas and. <laughs> These will help you sleep. Thank you, sir. You're very kind. Let me try and get some rest, you hear? If you need me, I'll be in the next room. Good night. Try very hard. To remember that night. Your mother. And your father. And Kevin. And Jennifer. In the car. Your grandmother in the car? Grandma's house. Ah, come on. This one No, no. Come on. The world for the road. All right, all right. Then come on back here next week. Oh, we'll be back, Bernie. Don't worry. Don't forget, sweetheart. Everybody say goodnight to Grandma. Say goodnight to Grandma. Bye. Good night. Oh, Jennifer, you little doll. Thank you. She's your pearl, you know. Just look at those eyes. You're going to kill the boys in a few years. You're going to have to get a baseball bat. No, she doesn't need a baseball bat. No kisses. Okay, gang, hold up. Let's go. Yeah, goodbye, dude. Well, uh, goodbye, Bernie. Next weekend, don't forget that. See you next oh, week. Jennifer, you little dumb. Now, you two children. You mind what your older sister says, do just what she tells you to. Huh? All right, darling. All right, darling. 
So you all left Grandma's house? Yes. And you were riding in the car? What happened in the car? Arguing. Mommy and Daddy. <laughs> oh, that's speeding. You want to get home, don't you? Hmm? In one piece, I would like to, yes. Well, I don't know. I'm not insisted on staying. <laughs> but you didn't turn down the one more for the road, did you? Well, if, if we'd have gone when I wanted to, there wouldn't have been one more for the road. Dead. Who are you? I'm Jennifer. You who? Jennifer. What happened to Mary? She died in a car accident. I thought it was you who died in a car crash. They tried to kill me. All of them. They were all to blame. Mary, too. Anyway, I told her I wasn't going to stay in that nut house with her. I don't want to be together with her anymore. Jennifer! Don't go! Please stay! Jennifer! Please! Jennifer! That's good, Mary. No. No, it's not. I loved her. I loved her. I loved her. I loved her.
Sarah? Just checking, see if everything's okay. <gasps> Can I get you anything? No, no thanks. Hi, Mommy. Oh, my evilness, what a wonderful film. <laughs> I mean, it had a little bit everything. It had psychological drama. It had, well, those nice little children, those little kitties running around trying to do each other in. And, hmm, and, and well, and it also had, uh, well, a ghost. Yeah, uh, it was a sort of a uh, psychological, but yet ghost story as well because you know was it in the little girl's mind or was it a real undead ghost of her sister doing all this possession and killing and all the things that uh, you well you wouldn't want a, 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 a any respectful good ghost doing <laughs> uh, anyway we hope you enjoyed it we as much as we enjoy every episode coming to you and bringing it to you. <laughs> Have an Agostini or two showing a toy or three. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, until next time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There was a, one other little toy. The psychiatrist uh, kept bringing on those... Uh, banks, those, uh, those, uh, those ancient banks of his, and showing what they could do and and things like that. And well, here's an old one of mine. It's a cast iron bank. A friend of mine gave it to me. He uh, was born in 1935, so this was one of his childhood favorites. It was a nice little elephant cast iron bank and you would put the uh well you'd put the coin up in top of the head and it would come down and come through the trunk somehow and and uh and it would that was about all it would do but it's very pretty it's very nicely made it's cast iron it's very heavy so anyway it sort of went along with the the, the feature film I'm not sure what he was trying to prove with all those banks and the psychiatry of it all but well who can explain psychiatrists they should have got a ghostbuster they really would have uh, maybe had things happen a little differently if they had known who to call <laughs> all right now it's time my dear fiends <laughs> <laughs> and as always, keep screaming. <laughs> <laughs>